Right, so now I'm going to talk about local truncation error. Okay, so we're going to look at the exact solution y of t, which is the exact solution. Right, and uh, y sub uh, k plus m, right, is computed which, uh, so yk plus m is the numerical solution, if you will. And this is computed uh, under the assumption that the previous data, right, which it depends on, which is uh, yk all the way up to y to y sub k plus m minus 1, right, are all correct. What I mean by that is to say that uh, it agrees with the exact solution uh, at the corresponding time. So yk is y at tk all the way up to yk uh, plus m minus 1 is y at tk plus m minus 1. Okay? All right, so if, if that's true, uh, then the local error. for a multi-step method, right, is just uh, yk plus m minus y at tk plus m. Okay, so uh, if you recall, it's like, uh, you know, when we're talking about the order of the multi-step method, we had said that you could infer the order of the method by looking at the residual error um, when you substitute the exact solution uh, into the defining expression for the multi-step method, right? So, um, and, um, and then looking at what the, the residual error looks like. So how is that related to this local error and local truncation error perspective? Uh, and, and we'll see that these things are equivalent in some sense. Okay, so, uh, so if the multi-step method is of order p, and y is uh, at least uh, differentiable p plus 2 times, uh, continuously differentiable t plus 2 times, and uh, df dy is continuous, okay, then the claim is that uh, uh, y tk plus m minus y k plus m is equal to some constant times h to the p plus 1. Uh, the y, f, uh, the p plus first derivative of y uh, at time t k plus something big O of h to the p plus 2. Okay? Um, so that's to say that, again, it's like that if the method's order p, then the local truncation error is of order as uh, of leading order h to p plus 1, right, which is sort of uh, what we had sort of talked about before. So um, so let's prove this. And, and again, it's like uh, the reason why that's not an obvious statement is because when we talked about the multi-step method, we had said that the method is order p. Uh, if the residual um, sort of error, it's like when you substitute the exact solution into the defining equation for the multi-step method is order h to p plus 1. Okay, as opposed to this sort of uh, other way of thinking about it, which we had discussed a bit earlier. Um, so let's see, uh, you know, that they are indeed, it's like uh, equivalent notions. Okay, so let's try to prove this. So recall that uh, we said that a method, that a multi-step method is of order p, right, if the following is true, if tau t k y h, which is uh, the sum from l equals to 0 to m uh, a l uh, y <coughs> t k plus l h, right, so this is the exact solution at the appropriate times, minus h uh, sum l equals to 0.
go to M uh, B L F T K plus L H and then Y at T K plus L H. Right? So this is really again nothing more than substituting the exact solution right, at the appropriate times into the defining equation for the multi-step method. So this thing, right, if instead of y t k plus l h, you had y uh, t y sub t, well, excuse me, if you, instead of this y t k plus l h, you had y sub k plus l, right, and here, right, this thing would be zero. It's like because the numerical sequence of uh, y k to y k plus uh, m plus one is, uh, or, um, <clears throat> is defined, it's like by this thing vanishing, right? Um, anyhow, so um, so the method is said to be order p of this expression where you substitute the numerical sequence by the exact solution uh, is of big O of h to the p plus 1. Okay, that's sort of just a definition. So, uh, so what we're going to do is to just uh, look at this and, and see that it's related to this other notion of uh, local truncation error, it's like which we talked about here. So without loss of generality, right, you assume that uh, a equals to zero, and t zero is equal to zero, and you expand uh, y uh, l h right, in Taylor series uh, around zero, okay, so if you do that, <coughs> then you get uh, tau 0 y h, right, is equal to um, what I'd called d p plus 1, right, h to the p plus 1, y p plus 1, that's 0, plus big O, of h to the p plus 2, right, where, <coughs> let's see, um, this dp plus 1, Sum from equals to zero to m of l to the p plus one uh, a l minus uh, p plus one times the sum from l equals to zero to m um, l to p b l. Okay, um, so these terms, if you will, it's like come from, um, if you will, it's like show up, it's like when you do the Taylor expansion of, of this expression. Um, and what you want, obviously, is that you, um, the order conditions, if you recall, it's like had to do with, uh, you know, it's like the d's, uh, d0 up to dp, it's like vanishing, if you will. Okay, so the, the first term which doesn't vanish is the dp plus 1 term. It's like for a method of order p, right? And, and so that's, that's the coefficient that's like what shows up in the leading order error term. Okay, all right. So anyhow, all right, so that's what you have. Okay, so you have this condition. On the other hand, uh, Right, 
we can subtract. from this expression for tau, the defining equation for the multi-step method. Which is that zero is equal to the sum from L equals to zero to M A L Y uh, K plus L minus H sum L equals to zero to M of B L F at T K plus L <coughs> Y K plus L. Right? So that's the defining equation. And then when you do that, um, you get that uh, dPH, the dP plus one, uh, HP plus one, Y plus, well, the P plus first derivative of Y evaluated at zero, plus big O of H to the P plus two. is equal to tau zero Y H. <laughs> but that uh, is going to be <coughs> okay right so all right so the tau expression obviously is equal to the sum from l equals to zero to m a l and then it's like a uh, Every time you see the y's, it's like uh, you replace the exact solution, right? But you also know that, th you know, this whole expression is zero, so I can basically add it to, to this term without changing anything. So you get al um, y at uh, lh minus y at l, right? Um, okay, so so normally it's like um, you have k here, but then I've assumed that k equals to zero, so that's why I don't have a k here, right? Um, so k is equal to zero, that's why you just have y l there. Okay, so I'm just trying to simplify it a bit. Uh, minus h the sum from l equals zero to m b l uh, f at uh, LH comma Y at LH minus um, actually all right I'm sorry F at um, LH comma Y at LH minus f at lh comma y sub l okay all right okay um okay but uh if we recall we assumed that uh x for um L equals to zero all the way up to m minus one. All the all the solutions were exact. I mean, it's like which is to say that uh, we assume that y zero is equal to um, y at zero all the way up to y at m minus one is equal to y y sub m minus one is equal to y at uh, m minus one times h, right? Th those are sort of the assumptions. It's like in, in order to find this uh, local truncation error. So all these terms vanish except for the, uh, the sort of the top, uh, the m equals l case, right? So this just becomes uh, a m uh, y m h, right? Which is just uh, t m minus y m minus h, the sum from L equals to zero. Well, actually, no, there's no sum, right? 
<coughs> times h times uh, bm uh, f at tm uh, y at tm minus f at tm uh, y m. Okay, so let me just write this as uh, tm here as well. Okay. All right. So now I can apply the, the mean value theorem. So I apply the mean value theorem. Um, to this term here. Okay, so this becomes AM uh, y, TM minus YM minus HBM uh, DF DY at some TM and some unknown point uh, C um, times the difference Y TM minus YM. Okay. Okay, so I can collect the YTM minus YM terms together, right? So this is CH YTM minus YM, where CH is equal to AM minus HBM uh, times this derivative, which I'm just going to call F. Okay. All right, so with that, uh, what we have is that uh, you have dp plus 1, h to the p plus 1, p plus first derivative of y at time 0, plus big O of h to the p plus 2 is equal to ch right, y tm minus ym, and then you can show that uh, y tm minus ym, right, essentially by dividing by the ch term, right, uh, is going to be um, some constant h to the p plus 1, y p plus 1 the p plus first derivative of y plus big O of h to the p plus 2. Okay, and you can check that uh, k is a constant. Uh, doesn't depend on h, okay? Um, and and more or less, it has to do with the fact that uh, when you divide by this ch term, right, you can essentially tailor expand uh, the reciprocal of uh, of am minus h bmf, right? And so the leading uh, term it's like in that is a one over a m right so so this uh, k is essentially dp plus one divided by or the leading term in dp plus one uh, divided by uh, a m okay so that leading order error term doesn't depend on h and then all the rest of the corrections coming from uh, you know this h factor here uh, as well as the h factors in uh, dp plus one right get pushed up into this big O of h to p plus two term. Okay, so uh, again, to the leading order, it's like this k term here, it's like uh, doesn't depend on h. Well, actually not in the leading order. So, so k doesn't depend on h, it's like because again, any dependence, it's like you might have, it's like from dp plus one, it's like and ch on h, it's like can be pushed into this uh, high order uh, error term. Okay, all right. So anyway, so that basically tells you then that, um, you know, these two sort of seemingly different notions of 
uh, order. It's like one in terms of the local truncation error, uh, and the other one in terms of the residual error, which you obtain when you substitute the exact solution into the defining equation for the multi-step method. They give you a consistent notion of order, um, and, and that's, uh, that's basically what to say for this.